like this uh this uh uh I just thank the Lord for favor, and I, yeah, I'll give you yeah. an, uh, uh, a situation happened to us last week, I believe it was, it was last week, that uh, uh, we flagged two yards to side by side to put irrigation in them, and, um, and lo and behold, normally the water main, always two foot deep, it's always two foot deep, at least. Herlin started ditching and I flagged and he was ditching and he hit that water main. And I, I had to call Auburn Water. <laughs> they come out there and they repaired it. They marked it and uh, of course after they did, couldn't find the valve to cut it off so there's just water everywhere while they fixed it. And it's mud everywhere so we decided to go to the next yard and work and I said, well you go ahead and grade and I'll trench this yard. <laughs> And you know what I done? It, I, hit that, I, hit that, I hit that water main too. And uh, that guy come back and wanted to holler and he said, I want to talk to your owner. I said, well, you talking to him? I said, you talking to the one and you know, I'm the guy that he is. But anyway, and uh, I let him know. I said, well, I didn't wake up this morning to make sure we hit this water main out here twice. I didn't know what my goal was today. I said, the things happen. I said, all I can tell you to do is fix it and let's move on. So, but anyway, God's good to us, and uh, of course he threatened, he said, I'm going to get all your money, you ain't going to make a dime on these yards. I said, well, it is what it is, but God showed me favor, and uh, he's good to us, and merciful to us, but I tell you that uh, uh, it's tough sometimes, and uh, I, I want to preach something that the Lord kind of dropped in my spirit two days ago, and a lot of times he I don't get to study like I used to, and but I'm, I, we're going to change some things this fall, and it's going to change the world that I live in and, uh, and the society that I work for. But you know, I always have to apologize to the Lord for shortchanging Him because of the stuff that uh, I do. But the Lord here lately has been dropping things in me while I'm working, and I, I want to I want to share this for just just a minute, if that'd be all right. You know. I promise not to hold you long, but if you had set the kings, and y'all know the story, but I, uh, sometimes we get, uh, I know how you feel, Brother Nathan, that when we pray for you, sometimes we won't get in a pity party, you know, about ourselves because we feel like we've been beat up, and I have thought for like six months about Joseph. I ain't been Joseph yet. I ain't been put in prison yet. And felt like I've been betrayed. And my family hadn't sold me yet. Sold me, you know. So it ain't got too bad yet. But I can tell you the enemy, it seems like everywhere you turn, it's it's been tough. Right? But if you in Second Kings uh, chapter two, y'all know the story that where Elijah's fixing to leave, and Elisha is on his hill, and everywhere they go, to every city that they go, the prophets is telling Elisha, he's leaving. And he says, I know it, I know it, I know it. But, and when you know the request that Elijah had, or Elisha had from Elijah, when Elijah asked him, what is it that you want because you've been on my heels today? And he says, I, I would love a double portion of what God has given you. Amen. I just want to read Two scriptures in 13 and 14, and I, I just, I want to, I, I don't tend to hold you long, but I, I want to share something with you. Sometimes we feel, Sister Karen, that we don't have favor with the Lord no more. We just feel that we've been beaten, battered, and, uh, but that's just not, that's just not true. It says in 13, he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And went back and stood by the banks of the Jordan. We all know that that they went across the Jordan on dry ground. Right. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smited the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. 
I'm going to preach just for a moment. And this is what the Lord put in my spirit. Because I was weedy and I just said, where are you at? Where, where, where are you at? I'm telling you, brother, by the Lord, the, the, the Spirit hit me and said, where is your God at? And that's what I want to preach to you today. Where is your God? Because we living in the New Testament. We ain't living in this old. Sister Crystal was all around that today about the image and the likeness. And lately, what Brother Bo and what Sister Crystal has been teaching, I've been preaching, not stepping on the foundation today, Bill, but we all just been interlocking this thing. So I just for a moment want to preach to you, where is your God? Lord, if we come before you right now, Lord God, and there's nothing like you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done, Lord, for us. You've been mighty to us, Lord God. It's us, Lord God, that the flesh creates the doubt. You've always been a sovereign God. You've always been. You've always been in the midst of us, Lord God, but sometimes we fail to call on you. We fail sometimes to draw nigh unto you, Lord. For the word says to draw nigh unto you and you would draw nigh unto us. Sometimes we allow the flesh eye, Lord, to look and multiply the enemy so great that we think we cannot have victory. And it's just not true. It just ain't true, Lord. With you, Lord God, all things are possible. Lord, I'd ask you just for a few moments, Lord God. I know that I ain't seen you this week like most men of God has, Lord God. And you've showed me favor to give me word one more time, Lord. If you show me mercy today, God, I pray. And allow your anointing to rest on me one more time, God. Let me give your word, God, justice today, God. I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can be seated if you can. I always like to build a foundation or do a visual to where you can kind of get the idea of what's going on and how the importance from the old to the new. We know that the old everything, Sister Shelley, is carnal. Nothing wrong with carnal things by all means. It's, it does good sometimes to see things on a, on a carnal level. Sometimes we get better understanding. The Bible teaches us in Matthew. Matthew's full of parables that the Lord taught. Amen. From the old to the new using the parable. Amen. To help mankind to understand. And I was just thinking this morning, I mean, how in the world could I could I get this point across how important, amen, it is that we would know where God is in our lives, where is God well. You know, we we all the time we, we love to quote the scripture and in Psalms twenty two it says he inhabits the praise of his people and he dwells there. And 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 I thought and thought and thought of these things, you know, we we can quote scriptures all day long, amen, but we got to believe them, Sister Karen, and we got to live them. You know, sometimes the enemy gets a pound, and I think about when Elisha took over from Elijah and how the young the young prophets were scared to death when, when Syria had them all around about in a hole, and, 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 and they were all worried that they were going to be taken. And, uh, and Elijah, Elisha, excuse me, prayed and said, Lord, open their eyes for them to see that there's more of us, amen, than the enemy. And sometimes we get in that place, church, amen, that we forget, amen, that the Spirit of God, Sister Carrie, where it dwells, amen, that's the, that's the most sometimes we just forget the, of that. And I, 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 I just, uh, Brother Nathan, I know we say this comment sometimes, we are our worst enemy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to walk, amen. And I, I know, um, I, I've said it, and, and, my, and my mother speaks hard to me sometimes, and I, I know that Satan, I know, you know, and I'll, 
And I'll walk and I'll say, I, I know the word. I know it. Sister Shelley, I know the word. And I know Satan's job. I, I've got knowledge and wisdom of what the enemy is going to try to tear me down to do. I know if he can make me walk in condemnation, amen, he's going to try his best, amen, to walk, make me walk in condemnation, amen. And I, I think about mercy and I think about Brother Bo Grace and, and how it is applied. And I, I'm so thankful, church, of these things. And I, I just, I want to us as a people to understand we got to grow in this thing Amen. we got to move forward and it's time that we quit standing in stagnant water Amen. Amen. the water is supposed to flow Amen. through us Amen. what we say and what we do church yes. Amen. and we cannot no longer Amen. hold our head down Amen. But we need to hold our head up on our calling. Amen. Amen. As these young prophets would tell, Amen, uh, Elisha, everywhere, every city that they went to, Amen, that Elijah was leaving. Them, and he said, Yes, I know that he's leaving. Them. Amen. But the importance, the importance, Bo, Amen, Brother Bo, that I want us, if there's anything, if I don't go no further than this, uh, Amen, to understand is the importance of. Uh, of what she just was all over it, but the importance, amen, to grab it and hold on to it. Yeah. The importance not to leave, amen, until you fully, fully satisfied in this. Yes. What Sister Jennifer said, and it's overflowing the importance of it. Amen. Don't sell yourself short. Amen. You remember when Elisha was dying and the king come in there and he told the king, he said, take the arrows, amen, and tap them on the ground, amen, in front of me. Amen. And that king took and just went to tap, 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 and it angered the man of God. He said, you should have, amen, took them with some boldness and slapped them down, amen, being aggravated at the situation that you're in. Amen. Amen. Because you tap them all the days of your reign, you're going to have to fight the enemy. But church, it is time, amen, that we heed, amen, to our code. It's important, amen, not to walk around with a phone, amen, 20%. Come on. Amen. We can go back to the parable of Matthew of the five wise and the five foolish, amen. We don't know when he's coming back, church. But he said, what will I find, amen, when I come back, amen. I think about it, Brother Nathan, and amen, and we both are again. I'm going to pick on me and Brother Nathan if it be all right, and we'll tie a fire in that parking lot afterwards if you want to, brother, but it's all right. We can't do what we calling, our calling is because we're surrounded by the enemy so much that we're trying to fight that enemy off instead of looking up and saying, Lord, just pour out. Just pour out the anointing. Amen. Just pour it out. Amen. And I'll carry on. Amen. We're allowing the flesh. Amen. I thought about that phone when I was telling Sister Crystal. Amen. That that phone may lose its power, but it never loses its memory, church. I want to tell you this. Amen. Satan is always going to bring. He don't have the power. Amen. That you and I have because the Word says Greater is he that is in us, yes. amen, than he that is in the world, oh. amen, but he has got memory on your background, and he will continue oh. every, yes. every time you allow him to charge up, he'll have that memory in front of you, but I'm telling you something, yes. amen, in Psalms 103, it says he puts your sins as far as the east, oh. is from the west, oh. and we got to have confidence yes. in God in this. I don't want to get loud, but I apologize. But I'm telling you something, amen. I'm tired. Brother Bo, I'm tired of my head being down. I want to have a breakthrough, amen. Yeah. I want to see the land of milk and honey, not a carnal thing, amen. But I want to see revival, amen. I want to see God's people, amen, flourish, amen. I want to see the stranger, amen, receive what I have received, amen. And I'm telling you what is on point today, amen, of the overflow, amen. You have not because you ask not, amen. Sometimes we think it's selfish, amen, to ask for God for more of Him, more of the anointing, more of the Holy Ghost, but it's not, amen, selfish. It's clean. There's plenty. We serve a God that's unlimited. That's right. Yeah. And we forget that. 
If we remember in the Bible, when Israel tried to hoard up the quail and the manna, worms came on it. Because they tried to hoard up because they didn't have belief, they didn't have faith, that there would be food in the morning. Come on. I know it's hard to wrap things in your mind. I know it is. It's hard to fathom that. Brother Nathan, I you and I know as long as I've known you, you work hard, but it's hard for any of you to fathom one day you're going to have to quit. Man. It's hard for us to wrap around that. It's hard to wrap around one day we're just going to preach. <laughs> it's hard to wrap around in our mind we're just going to baptize folks. It's hard. We can't be human to possibly believe that, brother. But that's what you're going to do. Right. Because you built to get up every day. <laughs> and what I call me and Sister Jennifer called busting rocks every day like we on the chain game. Right. Yes. <laughs> every day. <clears throat> that's what I tell her all the time. I say your flesh got in the way and you wanted to marry a good looking fella instead of a rich fella. If you'd have had wisdom, you'd have married somebody rich. And you wouldn't have to be busting rocks today. You would have had to go to work. But I'm telling y'all, church, listen to me. It's important to know where your God is. That's right. This was given to me, and I, I want to wear it, not that I'm a show and tell thing, but I, I want you to understand the importance of the mantle. The mantle was covering, the mantle done many things, and when you read about it, but this is the thing, amen, that Elijah throwed on Elisha's back when he was plowing in his daddy's field. This was the one thing, amen, that Elisha would not let Jehoz have. When, amen, the Shulamite woman come, amen, and said, my son is dead. Amen, that I want, amen, you to come and pray because he's dead. Amen, he give, Elisha give Jehoz, amen, his staff. And the staff was laid on the child's face and it would not heal. But the one thing that Elisha, amen, would not turn loose of, amen, the anointing. I want y'all to understand that today. Amen, in the old, it's a carnal thing. This is what was anointed. This was the thing, amen, that would be anointed. This is when you've seen it. It meant authority when you've seen the man of God had it, church. This is the one thing, amen, that Elisha, amen, had in his eyes when Elijah was taken up, amen, that fell on the ground. This is the one thing that he picked up and went back and smoked the waters with. Amen. This is the one thing that Elijah used to smoke the waters that he can win across. And the question was, where is the God? Amen of Elijah. Amen. And today we don't have this in a carnal sense. Oh. Sister Karen, we don't have this in the carnal sense. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is inside of us. Amen. This is the importance of what I want to try. Amen. Just for a moment to preach to you. Amen. It's inside of us. Amen. And it's so true, amen, that the likeness of Him must be shown through us. We're not Jesus Christ by any means. We're not God. We're not, amen, any of that. We're just a prodigy of Him, amen. He is in us, amen, full of us. We're full of Him, amen. And I want us to make sure that you understand this, that we're supposed to go on and do greater than He has done, not that we're in competition with Jesus by any means but the point of it is when he said that that the proof of the power still stands church That's right. Amen. he's the same yesterday today and forever yeah. I want you to understand that amen that we won't ever see amen somebody full of the Holy Ghost and that's how Amen, that you would recognize them by the oath they had the mantle on or not. We're all required, amen, for when you're filled with it, there's a calling on your life, amen, and you'll have a spiritual mantle on you. Amen. But I, I want to I wanna leave something with you if it'd be all right, amen, if you would take this. It's both volumes to me. 
Like I said, I wasn't going to hold you long today, but I, it's important to know. There was a time that God spoke to Moses and he said, go back and rehearse. Yeah. Rehearse it in their ears. Yeah. And sometimes we just need to be rehearsed. What's inside of us. Come on. And the problem of it is. We ain't using it. Right. It lays so dormant brother Bo. Inside of us. And we. You know we got what we need. I want to read you this in Isaiah 59, if it'd be all right. This is good stuff, 59, 18, 19, 20, 21. I want to read you this. But sometimes we fail. We just fail. We need to be reminded. We need to be stirred up. We need to be in a place that people can see. Sister Karen, I don't believe no more to believe that Elijah said, you know what, I'm going to outdo Elijah's ministry. That's my whole intent. I believe the man was stirred up by what he seen. That's right. Stirred up and said, man, is it possible to have twice this much? Is it possible? Bible says in 18, 59, 18 of Isaiah, according to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemy. To the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And here's the deal about that for just a second. The only way that spirit is going to rise up, amen, if you rise up. Come on. If you begin to praise, if you begin to 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 uh, to to sing and, and, and worship. I was thinking about that song last week that uh, uh, Sister uh, Jennifer was playing. I sing hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. And I sung that pretty much all day, all, all week. I whistled it or sung it. Because it seemed just like every time on the hour all week long, I was, it was just negative, 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 something, something, something. And all I could text back is I can't hit it. I can't. All I can tell you is to tell them we'll get to it when we can. I can't hit it. I don't know what to tell you. I, every time I look in the mirror while I'm brushing my teeth, not being uh, ugly to y'all or whatever, and I got my shirt off, I'll turn this way and I'll turn this way. I never see a red ass there. I never, so I'm not Superman, but I can't help it. I'm just a man. I'll get as much done as I can and, and humanly possible. But every time I look, it's never there. In other words, I'm just flesh is what I'm trying to tell you. I don't have the phone book that I can go run and jump in and get whatever you think I need to do. I had a lady look at me yesterday. She's got shrubs from here to Jerusalem and back. And she asked me to cut all them in half. And I said, I cannot do that today. And she looked at me like I punched her in the head. You know, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm out drenched in sweat. And I mean, you're asking me to move five mountains, not one, but five. Ain't no way we can cut all that in half today. They just know what. She said, well, it looks awful. I said, well, I'm going to trim it up, but I'll come out and get it. That's the best I can do. Anyway, flesh is flesh. Right. Trying to get you somewhere. But when the Spirit of the Lord shows up, Different ball game church. Amen. Verse 20 it says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and to them that turn from their transgressions. And Jacob saith the Lord. I want you to look at verse 21 if you're reading with me, amen, because I know I'm not the greatest reader, but I, I want this to be encouragement to you. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. Them that turn, them that repent, them that's living for him. This is my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth. Y'all see that? 
Yeah. But the Spirit, that mantle has to be on you, church. You got to need the Spirit of God inside of you. You got to want the Spirit of God in you. Yeah. I know what the Bible says. Amen. Little, uh, much is given, much is required. Amen. Some people don't want. I want all of what God gives me and then some. It says, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed saith the Lord, from hence and forever. And I'm going to tell you something, amen. I, I thought about that with my kids, and I, and I thought about that with my grandchildren. Amen. Because I was telling Brother Bo this morning, I said, I, I asked the Lord this morning, I, is my soul lost? Where's my soul at? Where's my family's soul at? Where's my, my grandchildren's soul I, I, I want to know. And I mean, and again, some of you say, well, you're just walking on eggshells before the Lord. No, I want to know, amen, if there be any sin. Amen. I, I'm, I'm David. If there be anything, wash me white as snow. I don't want to lose my soul. Amen. I don't want to lose my anointing. I don't want to lose nothing. They favor with the Lord. I don't want to lose that. Amen. amen. There's going to come a time. I know that we preach it. We say that the Lord's coming back and and we don't know when, but I'm going to tell you, if he don't come back, this I know the Bible says, once upon a man to die, then the judgment. I know that I'm going to give up the ghost one day, Sister Karen. Right. One day I'm not going to be here if he tarries that long. Right. I can't see how, but they said back when I was as small as these young as they were screaming, I don't know why the Lord won't come back today. I don't know either. We don't know, but I'm going to tell you this. I want to make sure that my seed has favor. I want to make sure that anointing is on their life. I want to know that I've lived before the Lord, that He would look. And if you'll go back, and I was reading, amen, on them kings this morning. And I remember where it said, amen, and I had to go back and find it. I know the underlying things that it hit me like a ton of brick, but he said, because of the covenant that I had with David. Amen. And I keep thinking about that relationship that David had. Amen. That that king is allowed to have a, a kingship. Amen. That, you know, I was talking about Asa, I believe I was reading about. Amen. I, that's something that I, I want y'all to understand. Amen. We got, I'm not saying, please understand when I say this. I'm not saying, brother, you can't, don't leave him. Say, brother King said that my grandchildren and my children, they're going to, they're going to make it to heaven if they live like a devil. I'm not saying that. But what I'm telling you, that they're going to have more opportunities than anybody else. They're going to have more favor than anybody else again. And he's going to make sure, amen, that he stops, amen, the world for them to get in. And whether they refuse to come in, that's up to them because it's a free, real, free moral agent that you are. Amen. But what I'm telling you, I'm going to live before the Lord the best way that I can, Brother Lord, that all my seed, amen, all my seed, amen, will be right before the Lord. Amen. That they'll have the opportunity, amen, to get in. Even if they won't believe me, maybe they'll believe somebody else. But I know that mantle, amen. Brother Bo, that mantle that lies on you. At all points and all time, we got to know where our God is. On, our God needs to be in here at all times. Y'all yeah. hear what I'm saying? Sometimes we get beat and we get put in the corner, but that ain't us. Amen. We're not supposed to be in the corner. That's right. That's right. We're not supposed to be in the corner. We're not to walk in condemnation. It's just a fight. It's just another battle. You've heard it said a thousand times. Them people over in the Middle East, they've been fighting since day one. And you, once you was born again, <laughs> you're going to be fighting since day one. Amen. To keep it. Because he's like a roaring lion right. seeking whom he may devour. Right. You're going to fight to keep it. Every day. And I know that may sound discouraging, but I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing like seeing victory. Come on, brother. Amen. Ain't yes. that what God said about a woman travails? Come on. She'd be screaming to the top of her lungs, squalling, screaming. But when that child is birthed, that memory is gone. Of the sweat, of the pain. And I'm going to tell you something. It just, it just juvenates you to do another battle when you see victory. But you got to get in there and get victory. You got to walk, amen, under the anointing and say, God, I, I refuse to lose. 
God's good to us. Yes, Amen. Amen. I'll let you stay. I, I told you I wouldn't hold you long, and I'm going to 